Hello, in this video I'm going to solve another problem from the famous STEP exam. This is problem uh, 2 on paper 3 related to exam 2021. Let us read the problem together first. Let x be equal to a over b minus c, y be equal to b over c minus a, and z be equal to c over a minus b, where a, b, and c are distinct real numbers. Show that the product of this 3 by 3 matrix, 1 minus x, x, y, 1 minus y, minus z, z, and 1, multiplied by this column matrix a, b, c, is equal to this column matrix, including zeros everywhere. And use this result to deduce that yz plus zy plus xy is equal to minus 1. Hence, show that this inequality, a squared over b minus c squared plus b squared over c minus a squared plus c squared over a minus b squared is greater than, equal to, is greater than or equal to 2. We want to show this equal inequality holds. So if you don't mind, let us solve the problem up to here. Then we can come back and read the second part and do the other part as well. Okay? Okay, now let us go to the board and solve the problem together. Uh, okay, so here, the first thing that I want to do, I want to prove this equality is true for this matrix multiplication. So I want to multiply this 3 by 3 matrix by this column matrix, where x and y and z and a, b and c are related like this. And I want to show that this product is always this zero matrix. So what should I do? I start from the left hand side of this equality and I start multiplying this matrix by that matrix using the normal multiplication rule for matrices, yes? So it, mean, it means that I, in my head, I can partition the left-hand side matrix to rows and then take each row and multiply it by that column. Okay, for example, I will take the first row and I multiply it by this column matrix in the way that I have to multiply the first one by the first one, which becomes A, and then the second one by the second one, which is minus BX. I have to add this to the previous result. And then I take x and multiply it here, it becomes cx, and then I multiply it by that. So it becomes, I, I add it to the previous result. And I will do the same thing here. For example, I multiply y by a, I multiply 1 by b, and add it to the previous result, and I multiply minus y by c, and add it to the previous result. And I will do the same thing here, so let me just do it quickly. So this becomes minus za plus zb plus c. Okay? So I did this multiplication, I have to convince myself that this is exactly equal to 0, 0, 0. So it means that I should be able to show that each one of these entries that you see is actually 0. For example, let me do the first one. A minus BX plus CX can be written in this form. I write A, but between these two terms, I factor in minus X out. So I put minus here, and I put x here, so this becomes b minus c. Okay, so this is another way of writing this. And b minus c, I can write it as a minus b minus c, but instead of x, I use this relation, a over b minus c. And then you see that b minus c and b minus c are cancelled here, so then I have a minus a, which is indeed equal to zero. Yes? The second one is also the same. So, for example, if I want to do it quickly, so I would write B. Between these two, I factor, uh, actually, I want to have A minus C. I factor a minus Y out again, so I will have C minus A times Y. This is exactly the expression that you see here. But this time, instead of Y, I write B over C minus A. So this becomes B minus C minus A times b over c minus a, this is cancelled, so I get b minus b, it is equal to zero. And I will skip this, that's exactly the same thing. So we are able to show that each one of them is equal to zero, so this means that finally this becomes equal to the right hand side, because each one of these entries is equal to zero. Okay, now I want to prove that 
this relation holds. The questions in the step exam are actually very novel and interesting, I would say, because of course, if you want to prove this equality, the standard probably natural way is to replace x, y, and z with these given fractions and do some algebra, and then finally you come up with this answer that this expression is equal to minus 1. But the interesting thing is here that if you look at the problem, they are emphasizing here, use this result to deduce that equality. So we need to uh, reason along the line of matrix theory somehow. Okay, so I reason in this way. I would say that this 3 by 3 matrix could be invertible or non-invertible. But if this matrix turns out to be invertible, I multiply this equality by the inverse of this matrix, and then that matrix multiplied by this matrix will give me the identity matrix. So let me just describe it in this way. So for example, let me call this matrix A. My claim for you is that this matrix A cannot be invertible, because if it is, invertible, then I take this equality and multiply it by the inverse of A, and then what I get, A inverse A is the identity matrix multiplied by that is the column matrix ABC, and on the right hand side, whatever this 3 by 3 matrix is multiplied by the column, zero column matrix is the zero column matrix. But then it means that A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to zero. If A is invertible. But this is against the assumption. Because if you look at the problem, it is mentioned that A, B, and C are distinct real numbers. So this cannot be the case. So I understand that this matrix cannot be invertible. Okay? So this means that uh, the determinant of this matrix should be zero. Because you know that a matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant is not equal to zero. And we realize that this matrix cannot be invertible, so it means that its determinant should be equal to zero. So what I do, I calculate the determinant of this matrix, and I know that it should be zero. Okay, let us calculate the determinant of this matrix. So what I do, I use the expansion on the first row, a very standard calculation of a determinant. So I will take this row, so I would say that the determinant of A is equal this entry, and then I eliminate the first column and the first row, and the two by two matrix is left, I calculate its determinant. So let me write it a little bit extensively here. So this becomes one minus Y, and then Z one. But then I go to the next one, which is minus x, but you remember, in the middle one, I have an extra minus sign coming from the expansion of the determinant, so then it becomes positive x. Then I eliminate the first row, but the second column. So y minus y minus z and 1. These are the entries left. So y minus y minus z and 1. And finally, I go to the last entry, take x, and then multiply it by the determinant that I obtained from eliminating the first row and the third column, which is exactly this 2 by 2 determinant. So it is y, 1, minus z, and z. So this is my determinant on the one hand. On the other hand, I know that the determinant should be equal to zero. So let me calculate this determinant. So this is just one. So this becomes one minus the product of these two, which becomes positive zy. And then I have plus x, the determinant of this, which is y times one, 
minus this times that, I have three minus signs, so it turns out to be negative. And then I have here x, and then I multiply this by that, which gives me yz minus these two, so it becomes positive z. And let me do some simplifications here. So I multiply x in, so this becomes xy, and then it becomes minus xyz. And then let me multiply this in, so it becomes xyz plus xz. And finally, I write this plus 1 plus zy. So this means that the determinant of A that I am supposed to calculate is equal to this term and that term are cancelled. And you see that I have xy, xz, and zy. So if you want, I can arrange them exactly like this. I write yz first, yz. And then after that, I write zx. This is zx. And after that, I write xy. And then you see that I have an extra one here. So, on the one hand, we calculated the determinant of A. It is equal to this expression. On the other hand, the determinant of A should be zero. Otherwise, this will give rise to equality of A, B, and C to the number zero, which is against the assumption about A, B, and C. So this means that this expression is equal to zero, meaning that yz plus cx plus xy is equal to minus one. And that is exactly what we wanted to show here. And now we want to somehow use these ideas to prove an inequality. Okay? But it is not too hard to see that how this inequality reads in terms of x, y, and z, because a squared over b minus c squared is nothing except x squared, this is nothing except y squared, and this is nothing except z squared. So in principle, my goal, so in principle, my goal is actually to show that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is greater than or equal to 2. So this is my goal. I want to show this. But now I have a nice relation that I have already proven here. So I know that yz plus zx plus xy is equal to minus 1. Okay. On the other hand, we have, I hope that you see what is the connection. On the one hand, I have, I want to have the sum of the squares of three numbers x, y, and z. On the other hand, I have this uh, combination of the sum of the product of each two variables. So immediately comes to our mind using an identity, an algebraic identity, yes? And that algebraic identity, hopefully you can guess, this is y plus x plus y plus z squared, because this becomes x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2 times the first one times the second one, plus 2 times the first one times the third one, and finally plus 2 times the second one times the third one. That's a very famous algebraic identity. Okay, I want to know something about this part. This is we don't know yet. But I know if I factor a 2 out here, this becomes 2xy plus yz plus zy, but I just showed that this expression is equal to minus 1. Multiplied by that, it becomes minus 2. Yes? So what I proved is this. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to this expression. This is minus 2. I move it to the other side. This becomes x plus y plus z squared plus 2. Yes? And everyone knows that regardless of the values for x, y, and z, because this is an even power, this, this expression is non-negative. 
at least it is zero if x, y, and z are all equal to zero, okay? But this is always greater than or equal to zero. So this means that the whole combination is definitely greater than or equal to two. So this expression is equal to this. On the other hand, the expression itself is greater than or equal to two because this part is non-negative. So this means that this expression is also greater than or equal to two. Okay, so this is the solution to the first part of the problem. Let us go and read the second part together, okay? Uh, so what is the second part? More or less, usually the step exam uh, questions are like this. So they give you some part and then you want to use similar ideas to actually be able to prove the other part. Okay, so what is the second part? Let x be 2a over b plus c, y be equal to 2b over c plus a, and z be equal to 2c over a plus b. Again, a, b, and c are positive real numbers. Use a suitable matrix. Show that x, y, z plus y, z plus z, x plus x, y is equal to 4. Hence, show that this inequality holds. Show further that this inequality also holds. So if you compare this inequality and that inequality, you see that they are actually carbon copy of one another, except that here I have a coefficient 5, but here I have a coefficient 7. Okay, so now let us go to the board and solve the problem on the board together. Uh, okay, so here you can feel that this problem is also similar to the first problem and that is the goal. The, from the experience we got by solving the first part of the problem, we should be able to answer this problem. Okay, so here uh, x, y, and z are related to a, b, and c. It is mentioned that a, b, and c are positive real numbers. They haven't mentioned that they are distinct, but we know that A, B, and C are positive in this case. And then we want to use the same idea. You want to use a suitable matrix to prove the equality here. So hopefully you remember the trick. The trick is to be able to come up with a matrix and then exactly similar to that and then try to motivate us motivate yourself that why this matrix that you're supposed to write is invertible and then put the determinant equal to zero and hopefully if you have done everything right you will get this equation this time instead okay so by the way it's not hard how can i guess that matrix equality which was given in the first part of the problem so here we have to come up with that matrix equation ourselves in this case and that is not hard so for example here you see that this x is equal to 2a over b plus c so what i can do i can rewrite this expression in this form this equation in this form 2a is equal to b plus c multiplied by x so this becomes bx and then i write plus cx then i move everything to the left yes so what i do i would write 2a minus let me write xb and then let me write minus xc. I'm writing this in this form intentionally because now you see this is a first degree equation and I can see this and understand how should I write the matrix equation. Okay, so let us be patient and do the next one as well. So y is equal to 2b and over c plus a. I will do the same thing. So 2b is equal to uh, yc plus ya, and I move everything to the left, but this time I want to keep the order of appearance of a, b, and c the same. So I move this to the left and I write it first, minus y times a, and the one with the b I write it second, and then I move this to the left and write this with minus uh, 
xyc equals to 0. Then I will do another equation here. So z is equal to 2c over a plus b. So I can rewrite it again, rearrange it in this form, z times a plus z times b. And then I move them to the other side. And again, I want to keep the order of appearance of a, b, and c the same. So I would write minus z a minus z b. And then I have plus 2 c. Yes? Now, try to concentrate on these three linear equations. Then it is not hard to see immediately how can you write this in an equivalent way in the matrix language. So I can write this in this form. So I need a 3 by 3 matrix, which is multiplied by the column matrix, but my column matrix includes A, B, and C as entries. And on the right-hand side, I have 0, 0, and 0. And it is very easy to guess what is the first row. So these coefficients that you see here are playing the role of the first row entries. Yes, 2 minus x minus x. Let me double check. If I am supposed to multiply this matrix here, I partition this matrix into rows, then I start taking each row and multiply it by each column. But what happens if I do that? I will take 2 and multiply it by a, it becomes 2a. I will take minus x and multiply it by b, it becomes minus xb. And I will take this one and multiply it here, it becomes minus xc. And I equate it to the first entry here, which is 0. So you see that it is clear that I can rewrite this system of equations into a matrix form. So the next one will be minus y, 2, so minus y, 2, and minus y. And the last one is minus z, minus z, and 2. So, so this system of equations is equivalent to that one single matrix equation. Okay, but again, this time, so let me give this a name. Let me call this matrix matrix B. Then this becomes matrix B by A, B, and C is equal to 0, 0, and 0. Again, the same thing. If B is invertible, then I can multiply everything by B inverse, if B is invertible, of course. Then what happens? then this becomes the identity matrix multiplied by that column matrix is the column matrix itself and this multiplied by that is this one which gives rise a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to zero but that's also a contradiction because it is mentioned in the problem that a b and c are strictly positive numbers yes so this cannot happen so b cannot be invertible so B is not invertible. Again, this means that its determinant is equal to zero. Okay, now you know what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to calculate the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix using the expansion, for example, again on the first row. Okay, so let me just do that. What is the determinant of B on the other hand? I will take this 2, eliminate this column and this row. This 2 by 2 matrix is left. I calculate its determinant. Then I go to the next one. It's a negative sign here, another negative sign in the formula of the expansion of the determinant, so it becomes positive. Then I eliminate the first row and the second column. I am left with these four entries. Yes. And then finally, I go to the next one, which is minus x. And I eliminate the first row and the third column. I am left with this. So it is minus y, 2, minus z, and minus c. So let me calculate this. It is 2. I multiply these two, 4 minus the product of these two, so three minus signs, it becomes negative at the end. Then I will have plus x 
multiply these two, it's minus 2y. 3 minus signs again, multiplying by yeah, minus zy. And then finally, I have minus x. These two, positive zy, and this is positive 2z. And let me just expand that. So this becomes 8 minus 2zy minus 2xy minus xyz minus xyz positive 2zx. So this is my determinant on the one hand. On the other hand, based on that reasoning, determinant should be 0. So this means that this expression is equal to 0. Okay, so let me just, instead of writing, let me just save time. I put this equal to 0, and then what I do, by the way, here, these two can be combined, so it is minus 2xyz. What I do, I will move uh, the negative ones to the other side. 8 is left on the left, yes, and this is equal to, it becomes 2xy, this becomes plus 2zy, uh, so, oh, sorry, the last one you see, I missed the minus sign, so that is negative. I move the other one to the other side, so it becomes positive 2zx, and then I have minus 2xyz, which I move it to the other side, it becomes 2xyz. Okay, so take this one, and then divide everything by 2. The left-hand side becomes 4, which is the 4 that you see here. And then this one becomes x, y, z, y, z, x, and plus x, y, z, which is exactly the uh, expression appearing on the left-hand side here. Okay? So you just divide everything by 2, and you get your answer. Okay? Okay. Now we want to prove two inequalities. The only difference between these two inequalities, as I mentioned earlier, is that is 5, this one is 7. Okay, so if you don't mind, let me give these inequalities numbers so that I don't need to rewrite it again. So let me call this number 1, and let me call this one number 2. My purpose, my goal, actually, is to rewrite these inequalities in terms of x, y, and z variables rather than its original form in terms of a, b, and c. Why is that? Because I have some extra piece of information regarding the variables of x, y, and z uh, related together, yes? I do not have the relation between a, b, and c directly in the problem. Of course, I can replace x, y, and z in this equation and find the relation between a, b, and c, but I found I find it actually simpler to do the other way around. Instead of thinking on this inequality in terms of a, b, and c, I rewrite this inequality in terms of x, y, and z, and I will try to solve and prove that inequality. Okay? So let us see how it will work. So what I am going to do so let me just work on the first one. So for example, 2a plus b plus c can be written in this form. So here, uh, what you can see is that instead of 2a, I hope that this is visible in the camera. So 2a is x times the whole package of b plus c. Okay, so what I do, instead of 2a, I write b plus c multiplied by x. Yes, so instead of 2a, using that relation, I can write b plus c times x. But there is another b plus c coming in. And then what I do, I factor a b plus c out. From here, x is left. From here, 1 is left. Okay? Similarly, I hope that you can guess what is going to happen. So let me just do this one as well. So this time, instead of 2b, which is the middle term this time, I will use this. Instead of 2b, I write y times c plus a. So I would write a plus c. I combine these together. And then instead of that, I would write a plus c uh, times y. 
and then I can factor C plus A out. Y is left from here, one is left from here. Okay, and then similarly, A plus B plus 2C, you can continue, and then what is the answer? It would be A plus B times Z plus Y. It, as simple as that. Okay, now let me rewrite this inequality in terms of X, Y, and Z. It is possible. You might still think that, okay, what is happening with this B and C and A that you see here? But that is not hard because you can immediately see that the same product appears here. So that is actually canceled out. So I would say the inequality number one is equivalent, okay, instead of 2A plus B plus C, I plug this in. Instead of A plus 2B plus C, I plug this in. And instead of the last term, I plug this in. Is greater than five times A plus B, C plus A, and A plus B. Because A, B, and C are strictly positive, this inequality is also equivalent if I divide everything by these expressions. So that is also equivalent. So that is important to know that B and C and A are strictly positive, so they are positive, so I can divide the inequality. So then I will get X plus 1, Y plus 1, and Z plus 1 is greater than 5. So from now on, I actually throw this inequality away. Instead of proving that inequality, I focus on proving this simpler inequality, which is in terms of x, y, and z, because as I told you, these two are equivalent. So one of them is true if and only if the other one is true. Okay, and then hopefully you have enough experience how to uh, actually prove inequalities. We can simplify the inequality, but it is important to in a recursive manner. So we should be able to go back and forth. For example, this is equivalent. I can multiply everything. So for example, if you start multiplying this, this becomes xy plus x plus y plus 1 multiplied by z plus 1 greater than 5. So from here, I can conclude here, but it is extremely important to be able to go back. Can I go back? Yes, I can factorize it and I will get this. So it is extremely important that you keep this double-sided arrow all the way around. So I will say that this is still equivalent. Let me just do the multiplication once more. So this becomes xyz plus xy plus xz plus x plus yz plus y plus z plus 1 greater than 5. So I started just multiplying things in. Yes, let me double check. That's correct. Uh, X, Y, that's correct. And then I go to X. This is correct. Yes, that's correct. But can I go back? This is extremely important. You need to think in that way. Yes, I can factorize this and I can go back. Uh, still simplify it. So what can I do? You see that you have X, Y plus Y, Z. And let me write them in order. So I have x plus y plus c, and then I have xy plus yz plus zx, and then I will have xyz, and then I can move one to the other side, it becomes four. So hopefully you realize that this is still equivalent to the original one, okay? So then I have to convince myself that this is indeed true. Okay, but I have a relation. I was able to show that this part is actually indeed equal to 4. So, because x, because that part is equal to 4, I can use it here. This combination that you see here is actually exactly equal to 4. So, this means that because of that equation, this inequality is equivalent to this expression is 4, I move 4 to the other side, 4 minus 4 is 0, is equivalent to this. Okay?
So this original equation or inequality is equivalent to this inequality. But this inequality is trivially true. Why? Because it is mentioned in the problem that A, B, and C are strictly positive numbers. So this means that X, Y, and Z are also strictly positive numbers. So this means that X plus Y plus Z is indeed strictly positive. So the last statement is true, and this is equivalent to the original statement. So this means that the original statement is also true. Yes? Okay. Now, the point is that we want to prove very similar inequality. The only difference is that instead of having 5 on the right hand side, I have 7. So if you don't mind, because of saving a little bit of time, I will try to see that which parts I have to modify. So what I do here, I will try to see this one. So. You see, I will do the algebra exactly as before, so the only difference is that now instead of having 5, I will have 7. Okay, and then this one instead of 5 will be 7. So all these 5s that you see, I can simply replace them with 7. Okay? And in the last part, let me now clean this. Uh, so let me write this. I move 1 to the other side. 7 minus 1 will be 6. And then this expression again is 4. But when I move it to the other side, it becomes 2. But this is known. It's not very clear that if it is true. Even if I know that x, y, and z are strictly positive, so there is no guarantee yet that the sum is greater than 2. Okay, so still we don't know that. So this means that at least I reduce this harder inequality to a much simpler inequality. So if I can convince myself that this is true, then I am done. So my goal is to show that x plus y plus z is e greater than 2. So this is my question mark. So if I succeed to do that, then actually uh, I am done. Yes? Uh, okay. So what I can do here? I want to show that x plus y plus z is greater than 2. So the trick is this. Look here. The point is that if you want to do it immediately, if you want to do the algebra, I hope that you realize that it would be a little bit cumbersome. Yes? So because... If I want to add these fractions together, then because the denominators are not the same, so I have to take the product of these three as the common denominator, and then, for example, two of them will be multiplied in the numerator of that one, and these two will be multiplied by the numerator of that one. So I will get a little bit of uh, uh, actually bigger expression or more complicated algebraic expression. Here, I do not want to prove equality. I want to prove inequality. So, might be that is a good idea if I understand that if x is a plus 2a over b plus c, I hope that you agree with me, this is definitely greater than 2a over a plus b plus c. Yes, it's very simple to understand because a is positive a plus b plus c is greater than b plus c. So in this fraction, the denominator is actually smaller. So the whole fraction becomes larger. Yes, so this is completely clear. And then you realize by this trick, I am actually making the denominators all the same. Instead of taking the common denominator, which is one trick, this is much faster. Still, it's not clear, I haven't done it myself, that if I actually add these three, is there any way that I can prove this inequality? But uh, apparently, you see that it's much faster. Because y is also equal to 2b over a plus c. I hope that you agree that this is also, again, greater than 2b over a plus b plus c for the same reason. a plus b plus c is larger than a plus c, so this fraction is larger than that fraction. And similarly for z. It is 2c over c plus b, oh sorry, 
uh, over uh, a plus b, and this is also larger than, greater than this a plus b plus c. Okay? So x is equal to this is greater than that. So x is greater than this, y is greater than that, and z is greater than this. So if I add them, x plus y plus z becomes greater than the sum of these three fractions. But now the good point is that all of them have the same denominator, so I can take it as the common denominator and add just the numerators. 2a plus 2b plus 2c, I factor it 2 out, it becomes a plus b plus c, and then this and that are cancelled, so I am left with 2. So the sum of these three is indeed exactly equal to 2, but this sum is larger than this sum. So this is also greater than 2. So, I actually myself enjoyed solving this problem. The ideas are actually very simple but very novel. This is the characteristic of questions of this step exam. I also hope that you enjoyed solving the problem. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.